they say that our cross, you know, the one that we pick up daily and carry, the one that, you know, Jesus said, deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. They say that every person's cross is especially designed just for them. That there's something unique and distinctive or coordinated or planned out directly for me about my cross that's different than yours. You see, my cross today is to deal with a subject that the world is struggling with and so am I, at least with God I am. Now I don't have a problem with it in the world, I don't have a problem with it normally in my relationship with God, but having come to a certain place in my life at a certain time as this, in a certain age as such as a time as this, it appears that the world wants to get hyped up when God wants to wind down your time and give you peace in the midst of a situation where people are hyping and trying to get excited when God doesn't want excitement but calm. He wants stillness of soul, not anxiety, anxiousness, or the reverse, excitement and hype. Because you see, in worship, sometimes people get the wrong idea about who they're worshiping when they look at the hype of people as opposed to the person they're worshiping. Because when you look at heaven, you don't find it as a place of great reactions, actions, and devastations, and things going on, bizarre. As a matter of fact, if you look at heaven from the perspective of the book of Revelation, it looks like peace. It looks pretty calm to me. It looks as though it's all done in order and is being accomplished on earth in the disorder and array that we see happening to the earth. God, today, in his word that he gave me and I'm about to read and share with you is that has been working with me for the last, oh, I don't know, maybe last week. And I haven't completely got the message. You know, he has or I haven't, I haven't gotten the message, but he hasn't gotten through to me completely because it's been kind of a, what I think I know isn't directly what he's trying to tell me to do. And it's funny because it seems to be the Spirit of God that's telling me and not God himself, meaning Jesus talking directly to me. It seems to be the Spirit of God wants me to know something now that I'll be able to use and to share with you and to apply in my life, which is peace. Now, I've had peace before, you know. I have sat through sunrises in different parts of the country, which sometimes can take a long time. I have been at peace in the midst of chaotic situations, but now in ministry, God is bringing me to a place of calm, stillness, peace. He's taken away some devotionals that I was doing that I was very pushy about and very hyped up about, and he's bringing them back to me, but in a different formula and format. I mean, it's still the same video and it's still the same utmost videos and things, but God has told me to not record them or not do them unless there is this peace, this calm, this quiet, this stillness. The reason being is that in the world right now, Christian and non-Christian Atheist and deist all seem to be hyped up and wound up. They seem to be taking energy drinks. They seem to be doing all these extracurricular activities to hype them up and to get them supposedly prepared for whatever it is they want to do. The athlete getting wound up and envisioning his victory. The political pundit 
getting all hyper about how he's exaggerating and lying about certain politicians and political maneuverings. The Christian who's dealing with the reality of religion as opposed to relationship. And then the personal relationship that they have being contradicted, so to speak, by God himself because God is going in the place of peace and not in the place of confrontation. Because you see, there's a lot of Christians out there right now in this generation that want to confront. They want to commit themselves to a point of confrontation rather than cooperation. They don't want to work with the Spirit of God. They want to use God to confront people in their sin. They want to antagonize those that disagree with them. They want to cause strife in others so they might have life in themselves. And whether they realize it or not, they're playing into the hand of Satan. Because God wants to give us peace first. He wants you to find a place of peace and to stay there. He wants you to be at rest. Not just on a Shabbos or a Sabbath or a Saturday or whatever day you choose to rest or to be calm and still, but he wants you daily to find a place of peace. He wants you to know, the Holy Spirit does, the Holy Spirit wants you to know the Prince of Peace. He wants you to understand that there's a way of living that is walking not running. There's a way of life that is confident, not compelled. There is a way of security that you can have in the midst of your <laughs> tick-tock world, so to speak, but in the midst of your hamster-style living that isn't running in the cage, but is standing still to see God move as opposed to you move. God is moving, but he will not interrupt you if you're in his way. He will move you out of the way, eventually. But what God is trying to say in these latter days is, be still. Don't get caught up in the world. Don't get caught up in the religious hype. Don't be hyped up. Don't be wound up. But find now the calmness, the comfort of the Holy Spirit the conformable place where God wants to take you to be still, to wait, to, if you would understand this, enjoy His presence. Not in putting in earbuds. Not in winding up the 4-4 beat music and getting a hype pounding in your brain to get the words constantly repeated in your heart and your mind, to constantly bombard yourself with the words and the lyrics and the music that's all been customized to bombard you. But rather, God wants you to hear the whisper of the wind. God wants you to understand the fluttering of the breeze. God wants you to see the movement of His Spirit in the calm, quiet peace that He gives that only he can bring, that technology can't duplicate. You see, we're missing it right now. We're not listening right now. We're not paying attention right now. But today, God wants us to hear his voice right now. Calm, not speed. In quietness and in confidence shall be your strength. Isaiah 30, 15. All agitation is destructive of good. All calm is constructive of good. And at the same time, destructive of evil. When man wants evil destroyed, so often he rushes into action. It is wrong. 
First, be still and know that I am God. Then act only as I tell you to. Always calm, always be still, always wait for me. I am the Lord your God. Calm is trust in action. Only trust, perfect trust, can keep one calm. Trust is the attitude of faith. Never be afraid of any circumstances or difficulties that help you to cultivate this calm. Don't be afraid of the Christian yoga experience if it's directed towards Jesus and calms your heartbeat and heart rate to a place of quiet and peace and knowing God. Don't mantra your yoga, but rather meditate on the Lord. There's a difference between what God has said and what man has done. You can use those things to bring yourself to the place of being still before God. As the world to attain has to learn speed, you to attain have to learn calmness, quietness, peace. The anxiousness, anxiety, and attitude of the world in this last generation is running to destruction, barreling headlong into disaster, thinking there must be an action other than prayer and to stay there. That is your call. That is your direction. All great work for me is done first in the individual soul of the worker. I think the most powerful thing about Jesus wasn't so much that he looked a certain way. Because we're told that he looked just like any other man. I don't think that there was anything peculiar about his eyes, because they weren't blue, but there wasn't anything abnormal about them. They were just typically Middle Eastern. Jewish in that time frame and that time and place. I don't think that he was particularly tall because we're told he wasn't. I don't think that he was short because we're pretty sure he wasn't. I don't think that there was, you know, particularly anything special about his beard because he was a young man. And I don't think that there was anything glowing about him. But I do think one thing was different about Jesus that I think can be different about us. Peace. Stillness. Quietness of soul. Calmness in the midst of an anxious Israel and Jerusalem. Think about it for a moment if you will. The entire crowd is yelling and screaming, Hosanna in the highest. They are compacted together as a city, fit jointly together, screaming and anxious and also excited because they're coming from all over the world to celebrate the Passover. And yet, here comes one who is meek and lowly, riding on an ass, which would be very calm, actually. So you think, if you will, with me, by way of the Holy Spirit, to look to Jesus for a moment. Look at his face. Look at his features. Look at his calm. I think the attitude that Jesus had was that he paid attention to the person he was talking to. He didn't look out at the thousands and focus in on them. He looked directly to the one that God sent him to. And the thousands felt like they were being spoken to also. If the woman at the well had thought that Jesus was ignoring her, she would not have been so impressed. But there was something about him that was different. 
Maybe you'll disagree. Maybe you can ask Jesus today. But for me, I know what God is doing with me. And he's bringing about a calmness. <laughs> oh, I still get excited. Trust me. He's bringing about a joy in that calmness and a peace with a power that goes beyond the limitations of this body <laughs> to affect all those within proximity of me. That when I decide to exercise my faith in peace, everyone around me is affected by that calmness and confidence and peace in the quietness of soul, not in the multitude of words, which I am very good at. In the multitude of words there lacks not sin, so I am very conscious of every word that I choose to use. And I try not to abuse, so I let the Holy Spirit speak through me as often as He would, so He may counterbalance the scales which I am sure are tilted against me and not in my favor. But when I consider the peace of God that He's bringing me to today, as He was yesterday, and how He's causing me not to be able to do certain things, I'm amazed because I have a cherry tomato plant. It's bearing its first fruit offering to the Lord. Its first cherry. And it's interesting about this little cherry tomato plant. It's not so little, first of all. But that as it's growing its tomatoes, which they've grown a lot of green ones. I mean, they're all over the place. But this one red one that's turning red, it's killing off some of its leaves. Not the leaves that are directly on that cherry tomato plant, but some other leaves. It has actually caused different branches to dry up and to no longer get sustenance. It's interesting to me how the cherry tomato plant cut off its own branches without the Lord doing it. How it chose to focus its life-giving energy into the one cherry tomato and turn it red which it is now, and you'll see probably tomorrow, you know, if the Lord so chooses. But that it has its own knowledge of God gardening it and pruning it in such a way that it caused different branches to dry up and stop growing so that the rest of the branches may grow. God has been pruning me from those things that I've been doing too much of which is good in the winter, don't get me wrong, but for now summer would have probably worn me out as it has and I've been exhausted lately. And now God has said, don't do anything until you've rested, you've been still, you've talked to me, you've walked with me, you've heard from me, and then you tell them about me. And I think, wow, Imagine being still for longer than five minutes. Can't imagine that? You have, if you've watched this video. God bless you. Learn to be still with the Lord. Learn to watch and see what the Lord may do with you.